Hey guys, so I've had a few questions about how the enclosure is actually set up, um, both mechanically and just how we built it. So I figured I'd do a little video for anyone interested and kind of explain it. Um, before I do anything though, I want to shout out my awesome wife for the outside of the enclosure. Um, that's actually just plywood that she skim coated over and it looks like drywall to me. I mean, I think it looks pretty good. So shout out to Alexis. So when Alexis and I originally saw this house for sale online, uh, they did not show pictures of this massive front room. Um, so when we got here and I saw this little corner that's sort of recessed into the ground, I thought, I know exactly what I'm going to do with that. And so this idea was born. So after we got a rough idea of how big we wanted the windows to be and also the access door to get to the back, um, we studded up the walls and then added plywood and after we got it all framed out we added a product called dry lock extreme uh, and that's just a moisture seal the inside of the enclosure because as you can imagine a rainforest enclosure is going to have plenty of humidity i wanted the background in the enclosure to look as natural as possible so what we decided to do was uh, have fake rock for the background um, and I needed to make this as simple as possible because there's so much background to cover. Um, so what we ended up doing was using spray foam and then cutting the spray foam down after it had already expanded. Uh, and then you were left with these little holes that didn't really look natural. So we filled those in with plaster over the top. And then after we got it smoothed out, we painted it with a uh, spray spray paint that you can actually get at Walmart. It's just a Rust-Oleum stone paint uh, and I think it turned out pretty good for how simple the process was. For the outside, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Alexis just skim coated over the plywood and it's amazing how much that stuff just looks like drywall when it's finished if you know what you're doing and I don't but Alexis does and it turned out pretty good. Um, and then of course we trimmed around the windows and the windows are quarter inch acrylic so it's pretty thick and it doesn't have much play it's pretty solid so that was a little overview of what it took to actually build the enclosure now I'll talk a little bit about how the mechanics work and how we keep the animals healthy and happy so right now I've got sponge filters in each aquarium and they do a good job with regular water changes but they're not quite as powerful as some of the other filter options um, and also they look a little funky in there I would much rather not have the filter visible you know just so it looks more natural and everything um, so I think in the future I'll use canister filters which just have an intake and an output hose um, so all you have to do is just stick two hoses inside there so it's not as it's not as hard on the eyes um, and then e these are tropical fish so obviously each tank has a heater uh, with the thermostat on it and that keeps the water temperature where it needs to be um, as far as cleaning the aquariums they're kind of at a weird angle uh, you have to actually get in the enclosure and clean them out and most people just use a siphon to clean aquariums, but I can't get it to work very well, so I picked up this uh, electric uh, cleaner, um, and it filters out all the fish crap and all that. Um, and then also I just do regular water changes. I have a, an electric pump uh, connected to it, like a 50-foot hose that I just run outside and empty the water and then put new water in. So the Amazon tree boas are a little more complicated to take care of. Um, the first thing that you have to worry about is temperature. They are cold-blooded animals, obviously, and they have to move from place to place to regulate their body temperature, unlike us, which, you know, it's consistent with us. Um, so they need a warm place and a cool place and some different uh, temperatures in between that. Uh, so they have two basking spots during the day up top um, and then 
they also have a small electric heater that which controls the ambient temperature in the enclosure i have it hooked up to a thermostat so that means that uh, you know they at least have access uh, during the nighttime to a minimum of whatever temperature i set that to uh, because they are tropical animals and throughout most of the year they're going to experience higher temperatures than what our house is going to be set at so um, they have to have that minimum temperature the next thing is ventilation uh, these are tree dwelling snakes from the amazon um, so as you can imagine they have plenty of air exchange going on plenty of wind blowing around um, where they live so uh, what i've done for that is i've got a duct fan um, and it's connected to the same duct as the heater and uh, the ventilation it'll run 24 7 so um, even when the heater's not on there's still some fresh air being blown in there another thing is humidity uh, these snakes are from the Amazon rainforest and it's extremely humid there uh, and these snakes need humidity they can develop problems if they don't have the right amount um, so what I've done for that is uh, well originally I was going to run the waterfall all the time but that turned out to be too much humidity um, and fogging up the glass and stuff like that so I needed to maintain it a little lower um, so I just run the waterfall you know whenever we want to and whenever we want to look at it it's all pretty and everything um, but other than that uh, for day to day uh, I have a steamer that I picked up uh, which raises the humidity and that connects to a humidistat um, so I can maintain the exact percentage of humidity that I want um, and when the humidity gets too high then it's got another option on it which is an exhaust fan which moves some of that humid air out and it maintains perfect humidity so anyway that's about it um, just maybe possibly gonna get some more animals um, but other than that I'm so glad to be done with this thing and I'm sure my wife is too so thanks for watching